Panasonic's G-series bodies have always been a sensible choice, selling at a price point low enough not to shock a serious photographer, but capable of almost anything you might ask of them. The G80 proved popular and was a good step up from the G7 technically, with its high-end features like shock-free shutter, weather sealing and effective inbuilt stabilisation. Is the G90 a similar step up, or is it, as is increasingly common with digital cameras, the previous model with a few tweaks? I'm using the G90 name because I'm in Europe, but in the USA it is called G95. Why they changed it I can't say, maybe they liked it better that way. The only difference in the cameras is that the G90 has an organic LED monitor, while the G95 has LED but with 200,000 more pixels. The G90 is bigger by 2 to 5 millimeters in every dimension than the G80 and weighs 30 grams or an ounce more. It's not a huge increase, but I preferred it was the same size or smaller. It now has a 20 megapixel sensor, so all Panasonics with an eye level finder are 20 megapixels now. New and useful is in-camera charging and powering via the same cable, inexplicably still with a micro rather than type C USB plug. And the three top buttons, all with a different feel, are imported from the G9. Panasonic have now caught up with Olympus with live composite view, which lets you watch a long exposure image building up in real time. Top flash sync speed is up to 1 200th of a second, and I'm delighted to say the built in flash is still there and capable of firing a remote TTL flash. For video makers, there's now a headphone socket to go with a mic input and unlimited recording time on 4K video. There's also vlog shooting, normally an expensive extra, so quite remarkable for a camera at this price. Unfortunately, Panasonic giveth, but it also taketh away from the video maker. Because while FHD video frames normally, the increasingly popular 4K video renders a pretty fierce crop, as you can see here. For anyone who likes to use old full frame lenses for video, as many do, that extra 25% crop is a real nuisance on top of the two times crop of the sensor itself especially when you're wanting to make a wide-angle shot. In handling, the right grip is very comfortable and the camera itself is a near-perfect size, neither too big nor too small. That's personal, of course, but I doubt that any photographer could find the G90 uncomfortable to use. The camera is easily used one-handed and with the articulated screen excellent for video, for vlogging and selfies. I'd illustrate that, but last time I appeared in one of my videos, I had an inbox of tens of thousands of offers from women worldwide who had fallen in love with me. I fully understand why they felt as they did, and it hurt me to let them all down, so I'm not going to do that again. The headphone and mic inputs have now been positioned so that they don't obstruct the swung out monitor. For video, the G90 is now a very attractive package with 120 frames per second slow motion, double that of the G85, and there's still the snap movie pull focus and fade and the 4K live cropping. It doesn't have the video bells and whistles of the flagship hybrid models. So if you feel insecure being unable to use the WFM stroke vector scope for SS gain operation to sec stroke decibels, this isn't the camera for you. The EVF is the same as the G80's, big, bright and contrasty, and with no need of improvement. The three top buttons are a definite improvement to fluid handling, while the camera's extra size isn't apparent except in side-by-side -side comparison. Focusing, well single autofocus is instantaneous, as we've come to expect from all micro four thirds cameras. Continuous autofocus, using Panasonic's depth from defocus, is applicable only with the maker's own lenses, and it's pretty effective overall. I have to say that I don't actually notice much, if any, difference in practice between Panasonic and Olympus lenses. And for moving subjects, I use the lens I want without reference to the maker's name. The G90, as with the rest of Panasonic's range, is never going to be the first choice for sports and action photographers. But for those, like me, for whom these are not key aspects of their photography, they do a pretty good job. I do think it's a pity that Panasonic stick rigidly with their proprietary DFD system. If they'd have applied as much research and development to phase detection as they have to DFD, we'd surely have Panasonic models that match the best mirrorless focusing models from Sony, or at least as good as the top models from Olympus but they've stuck to DFD with the full frame S1 too, so they'll continue to be viewed with misgivings by action photographers. Not being the best doesn't mean bad though, and the G90's direct competitor, the Olympus EM5 Mark II, is considerably less competent in continuous autofocus. It's not bad though. 
The fastest high speed burst mode with normal continuous follow focus is 6 frames per second. And you have the 4K, that is to say 8 megapixel images, at 30 frames per second. The 4K sequences are really video with the ability to set an aspect ratio other than 16.9. So for fast moving subjects you'll need to keep in mind the possibility of some motion distortion and preferably preset the focus manually. Looked at in the round, the G90 is a very complete camera. There are competitors outside the Micro Four Thirds system, but they don't have the massive array of native compact lenses that the G90 does, a major reason I stay with this system. The 20 megapixel sensor is the same as in the G9, so image quality isn't an issue. The camera is packed with features, the new to Panasonic live composite view, slow motion video, video shooting time limited only by card capacity or battery life, post focus to free you from the stress of having to make a decision about where to focus, and all the extras you'd expect from a thoroughly modern camera, including an improved menu system taken from the G9. My final observations about the G90 are very similar to those in my GX9 review. Apart from the slightly bigger size, all the changes made to the G80 to form the G90 are positive. None are essential though, because the major technical changes in the G7, 80, 90 line were from the G7 to the G80, when the shock-free, quiet magnetic shutter and five-stop body image stabilisation were brought in. Is the G90 a good buy? If you don't have a G80 or Olympus EM5 Mark II, yes. It consolidates the latest Micro Four Thirds attributes into one body and there's nothing radically new on the horizon to surpass it in the foreseeable future. If you do have a G80 or EM5 Mark II, I don't see any pressing reason to change it. One thing I would do is compare the price of the G90 with the Panasonic G9. At the moment the G9 is only about £100 dearer than the G90 and has many useful extras like the LCD panel and twin card slots. Image quality is identical though. We're getting to the point with digital cameras where, as with mobile phones, if you have a Mark 5 you skip Mark 6 and probably Mark 7 because it's not until the Mark 8 that there's anything worth the cost of upgrading. But, judging isolation on its own merits, the G90 is almost everything you'd hope for from a modern middle to top range Micro Four Thirds camera. Throw a few phase detection pixels into the mix and it might well be everything you'd hope for. Thanks for watching.